Right, good morning church, how are you going? I've got a, a great speaker this morning for you, Jan Warren from YWAM uh, Perth. And uh, look, I just want to say last year during COVID, when the first Sunday we had to shut down, Jan was asked to speak. Um, and this year, uh, we had Mission Sunday last weekend, Jan was asked to speak at that, and the government shut us down again. So uh, we're going to battle on with this, and we're going to have her speak to you this morning, so I know you're going to be absolutely blessed. And uh, we're social distancing at the moment, she's right beside me, so warm welcome to Jan Warren. Welcome Jan, bless you. Thanks Kerry. It's a delight to be here and I just really want to thank you all for, for coming. Where If it's in your homes, well, praise the Lord. So uh, we just want to thank God that He is with us in all things, no matter how difficult things might be, no matter what changes might come. You know, we need to be flexible and God is really, really faithful. And uh, so I just want to come this morning. I want to bring a word to you uh, from 2 Chronicles chapter 10, uh, chapter 16, verse 9. And, uh, and I just felt like God's wanting to speak his strength to us. He's wanting to speak to us about his goodness and his loving kindness. So just before we get started, I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Father, thank you that you are a God who speaks that you are a God who is present with us, that you're a God who loves us and cares for us. You're a God who is kind in all your ways. And Lord, we just come this morning, I want to pray that you would speak through me, that your presence would be very, very um, tangible in this place. Lord, we want to hear your word. We want to hear what you've got to say. And so Lord, we just ask that you come and speak to us today. Open our ears to hear what it is you want us to hear today. Open our hearts, Lord, to, to receive your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong to those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. Some of the other translations say to give strength to those who are wholly devoted to him, to strengthen, to offer strong support, and to make them strong. In his last sermon, Craig talked about Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. He needed strength to do that. Nehemiah's foundations for this was his intimacy with God. He was a prayer an intercessor. He wept, mourned and fasted. He asked for favour from the Lord and he was so humble. He faced many obstacles including fear but his heart was full of trust. We cannot sustain ourselves in our own strength. God was drawing Nehemiah closer to himself and the key is in the foundation of his walk with God and his desire to honour him. Worship is a key, okay? It's a key to bringing us closer to God. It brings us into his presence and we really need his presence. And Moses knew that. In Exodus 33, we see where the Lord is speaking with Moses. And the, and the Lord talks to Moses about taking the children of Israel into the promised land. And he actually says, go ahead, go into the promised land. He says, I'll send an angel before you. I mean, who of us wouldn't want an angel to go before us as we go into what God has called us into? But, but God said, no, I will not go with you. I will send an angel, but I will not go with you. And Moses' response to that was, we're not going to go forward unless your presence goes with us. Are we doing anything without the presence of God? We really need his presence. As much as how wonderful having an angel go before us would be, we really need God's presence. And uh, so it wasn't good enough for Moses to have his, an angel. He really wanted God's presence. Nehemiah also knew his presence 
And intimacy is a key in all that we're doing. It was a key for Nehemiah. It was a key for Moses. It was a key for Jesus. Jesus was always spending time with the Father. And that's why he said, I will never do anything that the Father doesn't tell me to do. He only did what the Father told him. It comes out of intimacy. Are we seeking intimacy with the one who is the lover of our souls, the creator of the universe, the all-powerful one, compassionate and kind and generous, wonderful counsellor and the prince of peace? And as we know his character, we know who he is. As we grow in relationship with God, deeper intimacy with God, and really know him for who he is. Uh, wow, what an awesome God we serve. So he is just, he is righteous, he is majestic. He wants intimacy with us, this all-powerful God, the one who created the universe. The one who loves us so much and full of compassion. Now, his joy is our strength. And Father God knows us intimately. Do we know him as intimately as he knows us? No, we don't. I want to grow into that. But Psalm 139 says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to retain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand holds, will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together. Uh, you saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would, be, would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Well, what a wonderful psalm. You know, it talks about how much God knows me, how much God knows you. And he cares. He made us. You know, he, he made us because he wanted to. He's the potter and we're the clay. And it was his desire that you would be. That's why he created us. And he's created us to have intimacy with him, to know him. But I was just thinking today with all the things that have been happening over the, the year, over, over what we're facing to the future, or what's been before us in our past. And I was just thinking, what are we facing today? Where do we need strength like Nehemiah did? And what are we building? What are the battles that we're facing? See, God knows those battles. He's intimate with us. He cares about us. He's loving and kind. He, and he wants to be in that. And he wants to give us strength. Now, just going back to that first scripture I read from 2 Chronicles 16, it says, For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong, for those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. 
He wants to give us strength. He wants to show us his strength in all those things that we're facing. I mean, sometimes we've heard people say, oh, give me strength. And it's kind of like I'm frustrated with something and I just, oh, just give me strength. But we really need to change that to God, give me strength. God, give me strength. I need strength to face what I'm facing right now. Just like Nehemiah did when he was facing the attacks of the enemy, when he was having to build, rebuild that wall. He needed the strength that came from God. And uh, God's wanting to give it to us. God's wanting to give it. His eyes are roaming across the face of the earth, looking for those wholly devoted to him, that he can give them strength. He wants to give you strength today. What is it you're facing? And a key, and a key that I found for myself is worship. It brings us into his presence, and that's why it's a key. I know when there's battles and things that I'm facing, difficulties, challenges that I'm trying to rise to, I can't rise to those challenges on my own. And often I will get up from whatever I'm doing and I'll go to my lounge room and I, I've got a coffee table in the, in the middle of the, the lounge and I walk around and around that coffee table. I'm sure I'm going to wear a track in the carpet under the coffee table as I walk around and I walk around and I cry out to God and I sing worship songs to him. Because as I sing worship songs to him, I find it brings me into his, his presence. And that fills me with strength. I walk around and the, the songs I sing are songs to him. Not just necessary songs about him. But God, you are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my strong tower. And as I sing those songs and as I speak those prayers, I just find his strength fills me. And I, I just recognize where is, does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. So often we face these things that we don't feel that we're capable of facing. And fear can rob us. Doubts can fill our heart and mind. So for me, the key is knowing who God is. Knowing his character. And it's also knowing what he has spoken to me. Because he is all wise. You know, sometimes I have a word of the Lord to do something and I think, I can't do that. I don't have the capacity. I don't have the ability. I don't have the understanding. I don't have the knowledge. Who am I to do what I'm doing right now? And I, think, I can't do this. But if God has spoken a word for me to do it and I have that word of the Lord, it's not my capacity to do it that makes me do it. It's God's capacity and the power and the strength that he gives that helps me to step out in faith into those things that he's doing. Did Moses have the capacity to lead the children of Israel into the promised land? Probably not. He felt like he couldn't even speak, so he asked the Lord. When God spoke to him to be the deliverer of those people, he spoke to the Lord and said, Lord, I can't speak. And so he had someone else do the speaking for him. I think it was Aaron. Who, who of us have got the capacity to do the things that God calls us into? In our own strength? No way. We just really, really need him. So I can identify with Paul in 2 Corinthians 12.10. See, Paul had a thought in the flesh. And in verses 9 and 10, it says, Three times I pleaded to the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that God's power may rest on me. And Paul knew he couldn't do things because of this thorn in the flesh. Now I don't know what it was. Maybe it was chronic illness, some sort of sickness that was there. I don't know what the, the thorn in the flesh was. And I can't identify a thorn in the flesh for myself. But what I do know is his word there. It says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that the power, God's power may rest in me. 
see, it's really interesting. I, I train up English teachers. That's part of my role in the mission. And uh, so, you know, I teach English, but I also train people to be English teachers. But it's really interesting because I failed high school English. And I think, you know, what was my weakest area? English. And here I am in the mission training English teachers and seeing such multiplication of English teachers into the mission field. It's a blessing, it's a wonderful, and it's a great joy. But when I was asked to do that, I said, no way, God. No way to the person who was asking me to do that. I said, no, I can't do that. I failed high school English. It was a weakness. But then God spoke to me very, very clearly. And as a result of that, I'm doing what he said out of obedience, but not out of my strength, out of his strength. So it says there, you know, my, my, I'll boast all the more about my weaknesses so that God's power may rest in me. He says then in verse 10, That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that strength comes from the Lord. 2 Peter 1.3 says his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. It's God's glory and God's goodness that, that we're looking for. It's, it's, it's God's glory and his goodness that he calls us. And it says his divine power has given everything to us for life and godliness. We need that. We need his power. It comes from intimacy and it comes from dependence on him. Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Psalm 46, 1, Our God, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. I'm so grateful for his ever-present help in times of trouble. I just call out, we just need to call out to him for his help and his strength. Psalm 59, 17, you are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God, on whom I can rely. You know, he's dependable. We can rely on him. Psalm 68.35 says, You God are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Psalm 105 verse 4. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. He's always available. Never leaves us or forsakes us. Isaiah 30, 15 says, This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. See, we get our strength from God, but we have to trust Him for that. It's in trusting the One who is all-powerful that He will give us the strength that we need for whatever it is that we're facing. Verse 31 there in Isaiah 40 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. How many times do we feel like we're going to faint? It's too hard. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. How many times we feel overwhelmed and I can't go on? You know, it's those, those who put their hope in the Lord will have their strength renewed. We really need that. God is wanting to give us strength. He is compassionate. He's kind. He's good in all his ways and righteous in all his doings. In John 14, verses 15 to 21 and 25 to 27, Jesus is in the upper room and he's talking to his disciples. And he says to them that he is going to give them 
a comforter. He told his disciples not to be afraid. So he spoke those words to assure his disciples that when he returned to the Father, he would not abandon them. No, God is not going to abandon us either. And that's why he has promised his Holy Spirit to us. He promised his peace. He promised his continued presence. And he asked the Father to give them another advocate, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. The one who helps, enables, comforts another person. So we really need the Holy Spirit with us. And and God's promised that. Jesus promised us that. We can come into God's presence. We can worship him. We need to do that. Are we worshipping God every day? Do you sing out in worship to him? Do you bring your heart before the Lord? And just tell him how wonderful he is. What an amazing God we serve. Share our heart with him. He knows us intimately. He cares about us. And he wants to strengthen us. As we trust him, we can know that strength in times of weakness. His power is all we need. And we can't do it without him. So let's worship him. He's worthy of our worship. And as we do, we will know his power and his strength. I I have a song that I'd like us to listen to. And uh, I think they're putting the link in so it's going to be attached to this video. I'm just going to read the words to you and then we're going to play the song. And... As we sing this song, and I'd like it to sing it with us, because as we speak out the words in song, and it doesn't matter whether you've got a good voice or a bad voice, it doesn't matter. But as we sing out these words, let the Holy Spirit fill you with his strength. And I just read the words. It says, worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Jesus, the name above every other name. When we think of the name of Jesus, who is he? Prince of Peace, Mighty One, Lamb of God. He is our strength and our strong power. You just go through and think who he is. He declares his name as his glory to Moses. In, in Exodus 33. Slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken. As we put our trust in God, the one who is amazing, creator, powerful, the lover of our soul, as we trust in him, as we trust in his character, we will not be shaken. So when those trials and tribulations come, when those things are there that say, oh, give me strength, we can say, God, give me strength because I know you are a rock. You are a fortress. You are my strong tower, the one in whom I trust. Father, lead us into your presence to know you more and more. Amen.